Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today we're going to continue what we've been doing in the last two episodes of uh, Emacs as a C++ editor. Um, we've uploaded um, and installed quite a few packages to Emacs to make it a strong um, C++ editor, but what we did not do is to give it the semantic parsing ability that actually turns it quite like an IDE for C++. Well, in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to install a um, uh, seeded package. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but that's how I pronounce it, which gives us the ability to um, uh, parse the metas of the classes that we use. As we're typing, we can see them, and that's just wonderful. Uh, well, let's get going. Take a look at the project I'm going to be using in this video. I have two directories, source and myinc. In source, I have main.cpp and helper.h. In myinc, I have myat.h. Main.cpp calls both of these libraries. Helper library has just a simple help function. Myat has just a simple add function. Let's take a look at the directory structure one more time. Uh, we see those my ing and source directories and my five files right here. Let's start emacs with .emacs file. This is the .emacs file from our previous two videos. You can watch those videos to see how we built this. Now we type meta x packages list packages. These are the packages. We look for seeded and as you see it's built in. So we don't have to install anything at all. Let's go back to our .emacs file. Let's add the line to turn on semantic mode. Semantic mode 1. Let's restart Emacs with our main.cpp. I type h and dot and then I hit tap and there's nothing as you see. There's no autocomplete. Uh, it's because we did not add semantic as a backhand to autocomplete, as a suggestion backhand to autocomplete. So let's go back to our .emacs file and let's go to the uh, bottom of the file and let's define a function here. This function is going to run when we go into the C mode common hook. Let's call our function my add semantic to autocomplete. Uh, this add to list function method uh, adds a C source semantic to a C sources list. And then we add our hook. As we try to exit, as you see, it says, uh, should I create this directory under .emacs.d directory? Semantic uses this directory to save the output of its parsing. Let's go to our .emacs.d directory and let's take a look. As you see, there is no semantic DB directory here yet. Let's go back to Emacs. Let's say yes here. And then let's go back to the same directory. Now we have semantic DB. There are two files. And when I look at this file, as you can see, this is the semantic parsing of our main.cpp. Let's restart Emacs with main.cpp. Go to this line, hit tap. Uh, and as you see uh, in the mini buffer, Semantic is parsing all the system libraries and all the other libraries. At some point, it should tell us uh, the output from uh, helper.h. As you see here, right now we got the output. Uh, it comes from the parsing of helper.h. Let's try the same thing with at underscore obj. We don't get any autocomplete for it. Uh, the reason is uh, because um, Semantic doesn't know where my at .h is. Uh, it, it is in uh, in between brackets, which means that its its location is implementation dependent. It is usually predefined by the compiler, uh, whereas helper .h is double coded, so semantic knows its location, so it can go and parse it and then tell us uh, what the contents are. So what we need to do is we need to turn on the EDE mode and tell semantic where the implementation dependent header files are. Let's go back to our .emacs file and turn on EDE mode with global-EDE uh, mode 1. And then let's define a project using EDE-CPP root project. Uh, name of our project is my project. And then uh, we give the location of a file, the main file of, of this project, which is main.cpp. And with the include path variable, we can tell where the implementation dependent header files are. Uh, relative to where main.cpp is. So that backslash makes it relative to where main.cpp is. Now if we save this and restart Emacs, uh, Semantic will know where uh, my add.h is. Let's go down to add underscore obj and when we hit dot tap, uh, Semantic uh, brings in autocomplete window the definition of add. Um, so uh, 
my at bat h has been parsed correctly. Let's do an experiment. Can semantic tell whether an include file is updated? This is important because sometimes when you're coding, the libraries your project depends on uh, will get updated and semantic should know about them. So let's try a, uh, editing helper.h in a, a different editor. I'm doing it in a different editor because semantic actually reparses anything that I touch with Emacs. Uh, let's add a dummy function, which doesn't do anything. Let's go back to Emacs. And now let's see if it is yes. As you saw, semantic successfully reparse helper.h. Let's try the same thing with my add.h. This file is different than helper.h because it's in brackets as opposed to helper.h, which is in quotes. Uh, let's add this new function. It's called add new. Let's go back to Emacs after we save it. Let's see if semantic reparsed it. As you see, there is no add new function here. So semantic did not reparse it. For semantic to reparse the header files in brackets, we have to restart Emacs. Let's go try again. Oh, here we go. Now we have the add new function right in the autocomplete. Um, so uh, there is this, this uh, different behavior of semantic. With the quoted uh, header files, it will reparse it immediately. And with the bracket ones, it will reparse only when you restart it. So now let's, let's um, I'm adding a, a struct here, my struct. And as I'm typing, uh, you see that it's automatically autocompleting it. Uh, we can see that uh, autocomplete immediately understands it because uh, semantic reparses the buffer when Emacs is in idle mode. Um, this is very important. If you don't have this turned on by default, you should turn it on in your .emacs file. This method, uh, global uh, semantic idle scheduler mode 1, will turn scheduler mode on, idle scheduler mode on for all your buffers. Thank you for watching, good luck and have fun coding with Semantic.